Hello everyone from Chelsea Fan TV. Welcome back to the channel uh, for an opposition preview with my friend John Sinclair. John Sinclair TV, a big Newcastle fan. Um, John, I mean, before we started recording this, John, we were on uh, we were on your channel. We had a nice stream on there. Um, lots you. of interesting talking points. Um, I mean, first of all, I'll, I'll, I'll be totally honest. I'm not really um, big into the space when, when there's other fan channels. Like, I've, I'm pretty focused on the Chelsea space. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, tell me about, like, how long have you been following Newcastle? How long have you been doing YouTube? Um, and, uh, yeah, what, what got you into it? Um, thank you, good evening to you, Alex, and evening Chelsea fans as well. And um, thank you so much for having us on your wonderful channel as well. Um, for me, um, support Newcastle, um, also a soft spot for Newcastle. So, you talk about 40 year and um, love Newcastle, as you know. And I've been a season ticket holder for 24 years, and I love the club, love the passion, um, the history of the club as well. And I've been a YouTuber now for nearly three years off and on but i'm doing it properly now and um continuously and i do um previews reviews sometimes do a watch along i do my hashtag vlogs as well because i'm a season ticket holder at newcastle and i just um do my thing really so yeah that's it man well that's all you can do you, i suppose the thing about the football space compared to anything else is you get what you're given if you're a Newcastle fan, you've got to work within uh, within your club. If you're a Chelsea fan, you've got to work with it. And if you're a, I don't know, a Luton Town fan, that's mm. what you've got. So exactly, that, <laughs> that's how it is with every fan um, group of fans. I will say though, I mean, it must be a pretty exciting period for you guys, obviously with the new ownership. Um, you know, from what you had with Mike Ashley. I mean, how different is it now than a few years ago when you were in a relegation scrap? Oh, do you know what it is, right, Alex? I mean, it feels that we got our club back. It's just like winning a lottery. Do you know what I mean? When we got bought out um, by the Saudis, uh, Man Stabley and uh, Gdushi as well, and um, our Saudi owners as well. Absolutely amazing. I mean, we had 15 years of Mike Ashley, right? You know, and it's just two allegations, couple of near misses as well. He does want to spend money. He's been like um, poor managers like and Steve Bruce. Adam Pardew to a degree, yes, he got us into fifth place. And he checked Kevin Keegan absolutely appalling as well. And that's why he got relegated because of that. They hang Keegan out of dry. But when he got to take over um, back in 21, it was just absolutely amazing. I was in Cardiff that day when I heard the news that he has been taken over, finally. And I absolutely loved it. Then I was just celebrating and... I was so worried with me. I just felt they got our club back. We got our football back. And there was going to be big changes when they took over. Sat Steve Bruce. Got an Eddie Howe. He kept us up. And we got good ownership at the minute. We got Dal Neils, the CEO. We got Amanda Stavely as well, the part owner as well. And they say they're going to put the money on the office. That's exactly what they've done. We've done 400 M's. And we got to be careful about spending now because we don't want to breach FFP. But then again, we've yeah. got some good players in. Eddie Howe came in. Amazing. Got us into the top four. Now, a lot of people said to us that it's too early to get in. We got in the Champions League too early. Should have gotten to Europe our League straight away. Do baby steps. Went straight into the Champions League. Also, we mean for that. And injuries caught us out. But at the end of the day, Alex, we got our club back. Over the moon. Let's enjoy the ride here. Let me ask you this, John. Go. You you say you've got your club back. Do you think that Chelsea fans have had their club almost taken from them based on what we've seen under our new ownership? Well, you've done a billion pound, haven't you? I mean, um, with our spine centre forward, I'm not going to lie. But um, I just think you just buy any player that comes, in my opinion. Do you know what I mean? You try to get young players coming in on eight-year contracts as well. Eight-year contracts. I think that is unheard of. Do you know what I mean? Eight-year contracts. I mean, look, at the end of the day, I think you overpaid for a couple of players as well. Mudrik, I think you overpaid for this guy. I think you overpaid for Casado. Definitely overpaid, overpaid for him as well. 115 million coin for Casado. 
you think that um do you think that Caicedo and um we're not going to talk I mean, I mean we all know Modric is unperforming but do you think that Caicedo and Enzo Fernandez I mean they're two of the most expensive midfielders in the Premier League in the world um I mean do, do you think that they're they're worth that money do you think that yeah I mean how do you how do you sum that up for, for me, I think you overpaid him, to be fair. I think you got mugged off. I mean, Enzo is a good player. He is a great player. But I don't think he's in more than, what, 50 million quid. Benfica. 50 Benfica. million? Oh, come on. Be a little bit more generous. Um, <laughs> do, you, do you really believe he's worth that? No, no. I mean, maybe not more than that at the end of the day because he plays in the Portuguese league. I don't know. What, what do you think? How much do you think he was well, worth? You know, it's interesting me to speak about the Portuguese league. I mean... When you actually look at it, right? I mean, let's just take a couple of players like Ruben Diaz, Darwin Nunes. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, they're the two standout players I can think of. Oh, you know, th th those kind of players, they've they've come into the Premier League generally and they've performed. Could Darwin Nunes have scored a few more goals? Yes. But has he yeah, been a flop? Think... No. He's been a no. success. And I think Ruben Diaz at Man City has been exceptional as well. Um, for me, the Portuguese league is a league that is probably, well, the tempo is obviously nowhere near as fast as the Premier League, but the physicality seems to be there, you know, um, because, you know, players come in and you don't see them getting pushed off the ball easily. Um, they're still able to hold their own in that sense. Then you're just relying on on skill. I think it's, oh, I can't believe you think he's worth 50 million. I would have said, if I, I'm being gen generally honest, if I yeah. was... Chelsea, right? And I, I, I agree with you. We overspent on both of those players. I don't think. I would have said that. Generally, I would have paid eighty million for Caicedo, and probably about the same for Enzo. Right? I, I do believe that in the modern market for those kind of players, they are actually worth that money because, I mean, let's just look at it like this. Um, Defensive midfielders, the Arsenal just spent 100 million on Rice, right? So, I mean, that is your cap for a, a world class midfielder in that position. I think Caicedo, he's not there yet. And this is the thing we, we, we mm. chose potential over ready made um, players, but we've, we've actually ended up spending more. Um, but for me, Caicedo is, is very, very close to being able to get to that level. Um, I think he's been completely misjudged by the media. I couldn't believe what Gary Neville said after the yeah, uh, final against Liverpool. You know, he's talking about Caicedo conceding possession. And then you look at the stats. He only got rid of the ball three times in the whole game. He was on the pitch for 120 minutes. That's pretty good. And then, uh, you know, with Enzo Fernandez, I mean, we needed a player who could get us ticking. You know, the last player we had like that, we had Jorginho. Um, but Fernandez is more progressive. That's what I like about him. He's a really good player. He's a really good player. He is a fantastic yeah. midfielder, you know what I mean? And um, I always say when he first come, it's going to take a bit of time, but he's a World Cup winner. And he's a really good player for me. And um, I think he'll get better in time. And he will do. But, yeah, I mean... Um, I said 50 million quid, did I? I couldn't believe I said that. <laughs> That's that's hard. I mean, fair play. I respect the I respect the honesty, but I mean, it'd be interested to see how the comments react to that one. Yeah. Um, I mean, what, what do you think about if you were to compare what, what you have to what Chelsea have at the moment? I mean, what do we have that you want in a Newcastle team? Because I mean, we're looking at a lot of top teams at the moment, and I suppose Cole Palmer is a standout name, isn't he? You know, everyone would take Cole yeah. Palmer in their team. I think Man City would take him back if they knew how yeah. good he was. Um, but you know, apart from him and you know, maybe one or two others, it's very difficult to look at Chelsea players and say, I want you in my team over something that you already have, especially if you look at the teams in front of us in the table. I mean, is there anyone you would take at Chelsea uh, that you think would fit Newcastle? Um, that's a good question. Um, for me, I mean, I don't think I'd take Sterling. I don't think I would because who, I think who would take Sterling? No <laughs> okay. one. <laughs> I think you got mugged up okay. there. But uh, listen, at the end of the day, I, I, I mean, since you left Man City, it hasn't been the same player. To be fair, but for me, I, I take I take Cole Palmer. I mean, yeah. I take Cole Palmer one hundred and ten percent because this guy, he can run the ball. He's a dribbler. He can score goals and that. He's got a lovely left foot on him. That guy's going to be. Um, I take him all day long. For me. Then I'll look at others as well. 
And it's just so difficult, Alex, at the minute, who I take from Chelsea in a minute. I mean, Endo Fernandez as a six. I mean, we need a six. We definitely need a number six to hold them mid. Yeah. I think I'd take either Casado or Enzo and out of those two. Yeah. Mm. And um, that's what we need. Definitely need a, a holder. So it's going to protect the back four. We ain't got that, really. Because all our midfield are just CMs. Yeah. Bullers, CMs. We could do CDM. But we ain't got that. I mean, you've got Tanali coming back so next year, but he's not a CDM for... either. He's just he's a normal centre mid, normal like, centre mid, like, uh, like Bruno. Oh, yeah, 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 I agree. That's what I'm trying to say. But um, we definitely need a six. We definitely need a six. So, what are you doing at the moment? What what, what, what sort of formation is Eddie Howe going with, or is he changing it every week? No, he kisses four three three every week. He never changes the four three three at all whatsoever. He just doesn't do it. He does play feet at the back, 4-4-2, 4-2-3-1. He just saw his 4 3 3 three central mids. And that is Bruno, Longstaff, and Lewis Miley. That's our midfield three, come midfield three. We haven't touched on Miley a lot, but this guy, he's only 17 years of age. Fantastic pass of the ball for 17 years. So calm, composed, and nothing does the fears him as well. And he just doesn't have it at all. So whoever just gets that ball, Plenty of time on the ball, and he just uses it well. Yeah, I suppose um, that that I think that that's the thing, isn't it? Is, is creating things from midfield. So, you, are you struggling to create? I mean, where 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 is Newcastle's biggest weakness at the moment? You've talked about the CDM role, maybe a bit yeah. of stability in front of the defence. I mean, we I can tell you from from our side, we're conceding goals for fun. You know, mm. um, we are scoring as well, but we just don't have that stability. I mean, where where is Newcastle? struggling at the moment at the minute it's well documented i mean we haven't touched on the other channel me, my channel dan burn for me because he just cannot play with fast players yes i like dan burn he's getting a lot of stick because he's getting raped every single time like fast players goes past him balls over the top he struggles to keep up to the player set pieces is fantastic yeah but he's not quick but he does tackle well but for me you place on your right, I think it'll probably be Sterling on Monday night. Then he's gonna have he's gonna have problems with pacey players. But for me, Dan Burn, I think he had a better game against Wolves. But for me, I think it'd be Dan Burn. The defense, Fabian Shah and Sven Botman, they're back together now. They're playing well. Um, you're gonna lose Trippier. Livermento's gonna come in. I think he did a good job as well. And um for the problem is that tactically, Alex, our midfield, our defence are too wide apart. Yeah, they're too bit of a gap. So they can exploit that if you're not careful. But what Eddie did on Saturday, he got the midfield to get close to the defence. And it worked right. a treat. It worked a treat. So of late, we've seen lots of goals. 21 goals in what? Seven games? Eight games? That ain't good enough. Right. That's because, uh, because we've certainly so many gaps in the midfield and defence. Yeah, I suppose when, when you look at Dan Byrne as well, I don't think Sterling will be playing on the right. It's, it's Palmer who tends to play there, but Palmer's not pacey. He's he's intricate. Yeah. He's technical. So Technical, brilliant. I mean, I still think he'll get the better of Dan Byrne, if I'm honest with you. I think Palmer's just that good. Um, he is. Again, one of the few players that in our team, any team in world football would be happy to have Cole Palmer. I can't see why why you wouldn't want him. He's a young player yeah, yeah. who's juicing output now. And there's all this talk about the future. And by the way, I'm, I'm perfectly happy to back a process. Uh, but, I mean, how much do you back a process before you say, what process? You know, where where is this process, you know? Mm. Um, and uh, I think that's what Chelsea fans are having a, a, a bit of a struggle um, with this season but I mean Newcastle fans seem to have a, a relative split as well especially in the social media space um, mm. there's a lot of people piling pressure on Eddie Howe which I'll be honest with you mate I mean I'm watching Pochettino week in week out and uh, I, I, look I don't like Poch I don't love him I don't hate him he's all right mm. but I do think he should be given a chance to build this team and it's clear his strengths are not tactical in-game management. 
it's uh man management and then maybe setting the team up like he i think i think pochettino sets the team up quite well it's just during yeah. the game he, he kind of shoots himself in the foot you know mm. just reacting rather than making changes early and he doesn't read the game in terms of what you see during the game right you know you can do all this preparation but if you say something or change something at half time you expect it to work and it just doesn't really happen at the moment but what, what what I don't understand is this pressure on Eddie Howe. I mean, what is going on? And and how come there's even talk about this guy getting sacked? Because for me, he worked a miracle last season getting your Champions League football. And obviously you're going to have issues because of the congestion of fixtures. So so what is this divide? Well, it beats me really, Alex. I just don't get it. It's all coming from social media. I mean, I've been to a couple of away games and we've not ever called Eddie Howe to be sacked. We don't sing Eddie out. Yeah, but um, we never seen that, and I never heard fans saying Eddie out. But I've seen on social media, right, saying that he's not tactical enough, he's not good enough, he needs to be replaced with Jose Mourinho for people. Yeah, they want to get Jose in and get rid of Eddie, some of them. And I'm thinking, what the guy's done, he is stunned with football, English football, man. Do you know what I mean? I still think he'll do it, but I don't think be in the Premier League. Do you know what I mean? But for me. I'd rather keep Eddie Howe all day long because he's a young manager. He plays great football. The football we like to be watching, yeah. Do you know what I mean? But if Ed, if Josie came in, it's going to be slow football. It's going to be born football. It's going to be sideways football. You know what I mean? If it does come, the reason I haven't because he's a winner. That's it. But I wouldn't have Josie anywhere near my stadium. No way. I'd rather keep Eddie Howe all day long, Alex. And you know what? I want to see all the exciting football, and that's what we've got at Newcastle. But if even, Jose even came, lack of results, you're still happy with the football, like compared to last season. Yeah, but oh, well, I'd still keep him because who's going to come in? What what people's going to understand? Newcastle fans, especially, look where we were when we had a takeover. When look where we were before they came in, we were second bottom of the league. Yeah, it got us into eleventh, kept us up the following season, got us in top four Champions League. We've been unlucky this season with injuries. We had 13 players out, 13. Okay. And we have to play the same squad for about seven or eight games straight. And we look absolutely knackered. They're you not know, because we've got the subs, it's very weak. We had to have three goalkeepers as a subs bench. And that's yeah. why we just um, not be winning the games. I mean, I'm not going to blame any for it at all. It's just a fatigue. We haven't got a big squad, and that's what happens. December was poor. We only won one game in December, and that's against Fulham at home. Other than that, we're just getting beat. And yeah, now I mean, we've got players back. you know, it's it's interesting you talk about the the fact that all your players are knackered, right? So yeah. Pochettino comes into Chelsea. His reputation is having the fittest squad in the league. He had that with Southampton. He had that with Tottenham. You know, these guys run. I mean, you play against a Pochettino team. It's a hard-working team. They graft Please. and they do the dirty work, which is what you want to see, right? And if you have good players doing the dirty work, you're probably going to win some football matches. Uh, this season, for some reason, even with the lack of, uh, of well, no European football, we've, we've done well in the domestic competitions. So I guess that's been uh, our compensation for that. Yeah. Um but the players don't look overly fit. I'll be honest with you, mate. And uh, I have to agree with a lot of fans when I say, why Why is it that players are you know, not able to last a 90-minute match consistently? Why is Pochettino having to take players off for uh, physical reasons rather than tactical, right? Um, and, and it all comes into it. I mean, what do you think the problem is with, with Chelsea and Pochettino? And also, I know you're behind Eddie, Eddie Howe, I mean, do you think that Pochettino's in over his head at Chelsea or, or do you think there's actually a chance that this process could work? Um, I think for me, with Poch, I think he needs more time because it's his first season. I mean, obviously, you also look at those players to see if they're going to they're bet in for him. Do you know what I mean? But fitness is, could be a little bit of a problem. But also, you're just losing two games. You should be winning. Like yeah. Wolves at home. We lost four goals to two, Yeah. And you're just losing to silly games. Yeah, you got a good draw at home and away to Man City. I get that. You were woeful against us at St. James's. 
yeah? And you were woeful against us in the, if I'm modest with you, you weren't that good against us in the in the Ankara Cup. But then again, you only score and go play the law block, but you did try to get a goal in that. Eventually you got one in the end. But for me, I don't think you got a create, created enough for me. You need that spark in the midfield. So it's going to pass the ball. And you need a striker badly. You need a number nine. <coughs> Excuse me. I think you need to get to break the bank in the summer and get fit to Osman for Napoli. He will solve all your problems, Alex, up front. Oh, mate, we need him. We need we need someone who's going to just bang goals in, who's going to take their chances. And and the thing is, when you talk about the spark in the midfield, I think that we we have a good midfield, right? We have an energetic midfield. But we're struggling to see output. And I think, don't like, I will say this. Like, I'm yeah, not yeah. sitting here saying they've been rubbish the whole season. I think as the games have gone, we're seeing more goals from midfield. Uh, I know Fernandez has had a couple. Uh, Gallagher got a few against Palace. You yeah. know, he got the winner against Leeds in the cup as well. That got us through. And then you've got Caicedo, who his job isn't really to score goals. So I, I wouldn't criticize him too much for that. Yeah. But, you know, there's something in this team that isn't gelling. I, I do think that the tactical approach from Pochettino has been pretty poor at times. Mm -hmm. You know, I couldn't defend what I saw against Brentford. And, and I said, no. you know, apart from the Middlesbrough away game where we lost 1-0, and that was a disgrace, to be honest with you, John. I agree. You know, traveling I all saw that game. And seeing your team not give 100%, which I think hasn't been a big problem for us this season. I actually think the team do give 100%. They're just not good enough to win the matches. And then you look at the manager and you say, right, these guys aren't good enough. How can you make it easier for them so that they can perform, right? So play Enzo Fernandez in his natural position, you know. Give players the freedom up top to go and create. And I, th I think that the, the league is done this year. I'll be honest with you, John. I think, I I think the league is done. I can't see us being Newcastle. I predicted 1-1. One, one. I know you said the same thing as well. Mm. Um, you know, these are two managers that are under extreme pressure. I think Pochettino more so than Eddie Howe. But yeah. even so, dropping points in this game, I don't think that jeopardises Pochettino's position as Chelsea manager. I think um, as soon as we get knocked out of the FA Cup, that's when there's a problem. Mm. But if we have another cup run there, and by the way, the draw is looking pretty good. I mean, we've got Leicester at home, and then I think it could potentially be Coventry or Wolves. Um, I mean, that is great. I mean, Absolutely. that's fantastic, mate. So, you know, it, it is written in the stars for us to try and get something in the FA Cup, but the Carabao Cup was written in the stars, and we bottled it. You know, we bottled it. I agree. Um, I mean, against Liverpool on the Liverpool on the twenty ones as well. I mean, some of the players that Liverpool pitched out, half the names they even know. Early dance, uh, yeah. I mean, I if I was a Chelsea fan, well. I'll be furious as well. How come? Right, you had all the chances. I mean, Gallagher's on lucky. I get that, but other chances you've had should have been put away. I mean, Gallagher made some couple of great saves. To be fair to him, but did he lose to Liverpool on the twenty one side? Unbelievable, man. That is this is your biggest chance to win the trophy, man. There's no Salah, no Trent, no Darwin. I'm not sure Nunes played, right? No, but Nunes was out, Jota was out. Jota is out. This is your was big was out. Alex, how can you lose to them, man? Oh, that is embarrassing, man. I've seen your finish of that as well, man. It was just, I felt for you guys, I really felt for you, I really did. And your fans deserve much better than that. That trophy should have been in the bag. And they just didn't do it. We suck. No, that's yeah. hard. We suck, John. And, and people are like, oh, and by the way, I'm, I'm one of the people who defends this process, but you buy potential. How can you expect potential to perform straight away? I don't know if you're in the same boat as me. I'll be honest with you, John. Yeah. A lot of people in the Chelsea fan base think that what I'm saying, it means I'm dropping the standard of the club. But how can I drop the standard of the club if the club has done that itself, right? I, I haven't taken away everything that was working with Chelsea, mm. that was producing trophies from the management, the directors, 
the bloody physio, mate. We didn't have this many injuries. We never had that. And then you even get new groundsmen for crying out loud. I mean, it's ridiculous. So I think that we're, we're certainly in a transition. But the question is, I how think long you are in a minute. I mean, I mean, John, how long do we as Chelsea fans put up with this, right? And trust this process mm. before ultimately we're just stagnant and, and it's not good enough because we're almost in year three of Clear Lake and we have not won a trophy in that time. Under Abramovich, we won a trophy on average every year, sometimes more than that. We won doubles under Abramovich. So... What is happening? Well, I think it's a hard one, really, because for me, I don't know what's going on. Could it be like an attitude problem within the players, maybe? Thinking that they're better than they think they are. I mean, they're happy to take the money. Some of them take, take the money, but they're just not performing for me. Your club is the biggest in London, right? And I'm going to say it now. You're the biggest club in London, right? And winning Champions League titles and that. And you seems like you're going backwards, do you know what I mean? I'm not going to lie, since you've been going backwards, you've got players coming in on good money and it's just not performing at all. Uh, by the way, Petrovic is a good keeper. Fantastic keeper, by the way. I, I forgot Petr about him as well. That guy is a great keeper and he's a young keeper. He's destined for the top him. But you're right. I mean, some of them ain't right at the club at all whatsoever. I mean, I just think um, some of those players, right, I'm not going to mention it's just taking a whole so It's just not delivering at all. Yeah. I mean, you look at the centre backs, the Sassy. I think the Sassy is going to be all right. Um, but by the year, I mean, good defender's got a little mistake in him. But I like that good so I like good so I like him. I think he's a really good player. Him. I mean, he's been a great signing for us, mate. And he's one of the younger players as well. So he really I'll give him eight out of ten. Eight out of ten for me every week. Got so eight yeah. out of ten. Yeah, every week. Yeah. You know, when you look when you lose a player like Reese James, I mean he's obviously he's been influential over the past few years, but we've kind of got used to him not being there. And then you've mm. got a player like Gusto, who to be honest with you, isn't much worse. I mean, he, he is right up there for me. And mm -hmm. uh, just very positive, you know. And I in the modern day football, if you don't have good wing backs or you know, full backs, you're in big trouble. Um, and that's been Master. one of our strengths recently uh when recent times under Tuchel we had Alonso and James um you know they were they were sensational in those positions and then James is injured Chilwell's often out for quite a long period as well he's just returned from injury and I heard he's he's injured again <laughs> there you go oh, there's some man. There. exactly he's been out for a long time with James as well oh man oh got it for you man because he's a really really good attacking right back he really is no, but Chiwo as well, John. Not, I'm not talking about as well. Yeah, Chiwo as well. He just came back, played a few games, and now he's injured again. <sighs> That's the problem, isn't it, man? I don't know what's his, that, that is fitness. I know his injury record's not the best, Alex. It really isn't the best. But something ain't right. What's he, 28 now? 28, 29, Ben? He's getting on. He's getting on. Yeah, but he's not, you know, he's not finished. He's, he's a good player. Nah, I don't left. think he's finished either. He's a good but, player. I mean, I, I don't know, man. I don't, there's just so many injury problems. I, I, for me, there it's been a stage where it's, it's not luck. There has to be a a, a deep-rooted issue with the way these players have been managed back into uh, full fitness because I don't see any other teams having these problems with European fixtures. I mean, obviously, there's injuries, but not to the same level that we're having these issues. Um, but, yeah, I mean, just, just before we finish out, um, yeah, John, how do you see this game panning? I know you think it's going to be a draw. Where do you see Chelsea getting anything from this? And what if you're a Newcastle uh, fan, as a Newcastle fan, how how are Newcastle going to approach this game as well? Um, we're going to push the game like we always do, like play 4 3, three. But what I don't want to see them in any. If you go goal up, don't play the low block. Yeah, Just keep playing on normal game and then we can cause you a lot of problems. Yeah, If you play the low block, we're going to invite pressure on on you lot and mm. basically that's what we did in the Carlin Cup in fact the pressure and it came that's only because tripping made that mistake trying to head it back to the keeper didn't come off but that's gone now but if you're going to win this game I think you got to get Colin Gallagher and Cole Palmer involved they get the ball then they could quite hurt us as well but our defence last week 
was much, much better because the midfield gets close um, looking after the, the back line as well. So that'll make it work. So if you are going to win this game, you got to defend properly, number one. And secondly, you got to use the ball a bit better as well for me. So for me, I think you need to get Cole Palmer involved. you got to get uh, Conor Gallagher involved as well. we got to watch him as well because he can cause damage. But who is going to play up front? Who's going to be your focal point? That's the question everyone wants to know for Chelsea. Because I don't know. I really don't know. Probably Jackson, if I'm honest with you. Um, yeah, we haven't touched on him, haven't we, man? I like I like Nicholas Jackson, but he's only young and he's raw. And he actually missed a lot of chances. Yes, sometimes he can be overall, but give it a couple of years, I think he'd be the real deal. I hope so, man. Well, listen, um, just before I round out, I just want to give a shout out to the sponsors of this video, Match Bingo. Guys, yeah. if you haven't heard of Match Bingo, uh, it's bingo with a twist. So rather than play with numbers, you would play with in-game uh, things that would happen in the game, basically. So throw-ins, corners, offsides, things like that. Cross out your lines. The more lines you cross out, the more money you will win. Uh, now, the good thing about this game, guys, is it's capped at £2. So actually, you only put in a small amount, but you can win a big amount as well. Uh, we had someone who came on the other day. They won 125 quid. Uh, I think his name was T. Um, so shout out to T. If anyone else does end up winning, uh, let us know. Click the link below. Download Match Bingo. Let me know how you get on. And listen, uh, John, it's been an absolute pleasure, mate. Thanks for have, thanks for coming on. And, uh, you know, hopefully it's a good game. I know there's a lot of pressure on both sides, but... We'll see what happens. See what happens. Who's pressure, man? But can I give my shout out as well, please, on my socials? Of course, mate. Of course. If you want to go and find John, John, where, where can we find you? Thank you very much indeed. And um, first of all, thanks so much for having us on, Alex. It's been a pleasure. You're an absolute talent, like I said before. You, Lewis, as well. If Lewis is watching, big up to Lewis, by the way, as well. I love chatting one day, you never know. Um, for me, um, you can find us um, on Insta, Facebook, X YouTube John Sinclair TV and it's all across all platforms, of course. You can find us um doing the previous reviews. I do some watch along sometimes, breaking news, real talk podcasts, and just a collab show once a week as well. So awesome. like this guy. Well, guys, go and subscribe to John as well. We'll leave the we'll leave the link down below. And uh thank you for coming on, mate. Always a pleasure, and uh, we will speak very, very soon. Definitely. Thank you for having us on, mate.